This next video is going to be a review on another advanced method you can use to check your control points. And this one is where you essentially force the total station to station accurately so that you can perform an as-built. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to station on this job with the given control points that are given to me. And you're going to notice that I'm coming up with some sort of error. So there you have it. Obviously there's some sort of stationing issue. I have a pretty bad, I have a pretty bad delta horizontal distance. Even though my stationing is able to find a best fit, my horizontal distance is giving me a little bit of a concern. So when I press check, I notice that all my points, points 1, 5, and 3, are struggling to align. The total station is doing a lot of work to get them aligned. Well, what is another solution I can do to see where this error might occur? Well, I'm going to go ahead and back out of this, and I'm going to jump into the missing line function and draw functions of the tablet and you might see something you haven't seen before but I'm going to go ahead and explain the three-step process to essentially force the total station to station itself. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to choose a point that you want to set as your gospel point and long story short this point is going to be most likely an intersection of grid lines or an intersection of offset grid lines. But think about this as a point that you really, really trust. Number two, I'm going to draw on my cat file a point that is a set distance away from that point that I later can replicate perfectly in the field. And for me, the way that I can easily replicate this second point I'm going to try to make is to just follow that grid line, as you can see here that's connected to CP3. I can easily walk down that grid line a certain distance and mark it on the ground and whatever that distance was that I walked I can type that in the CAD. So that's what I mean by trying to perfectly replicate it in the field. Try to choose a point, a gospel point, that's also related to some sort of landmark that's located on the CAD as well as in the field. I'm gonna let you go ahead and try to decide what you want to use for that but for me, it's often some sort of line, some sort of offset line or grid line that I can easily follow that's connected to a grid line intersection or a control point. So I hope that makes sense. Third, I'm going to use the missing line function on the tablet to replicate the exact distance I drew on a cat file in the field. And the concept behind this is that I basically put in the cat file a second control point related to my gospel point whose distance I can equally match in the field with the total station. Once that's done, I station on those two points, I'm going to get a perfect stationing, and I can run an as-built in the field of my other control points. Now let me, let me be clear, what do I mean by perfect stationing? Because obviously when you do this kind of a setup, you're gaming the system in a way. You are essentially tricking the total station to just station accurately. All I mean by perfect stationing is when you use these two control points and you station off of them, obviously the station is going to come up with a 0, 0, 0 stationing being perfectly accurate because the line you drew on the CAD was a certain amount of distance and then in the field you use missing line to pull that exact same distance in the field. So when I say perfect stationing, yes you're going to have a zeroed out stationing, but does that mean that you should lay out based on that stationing? No. The whole reason you're doing this is to give yourself some sort of benchmark to do as-builts. And in my experience, this has been a great way to verify control points, at least from the perspective of doing some troubleshooting and to get data that I can share with the GC before I actually commit to doing any sort of layout. So let me go ahead and show you the process as I do it on my tablet. So for what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make a control point that is north of CP3 by 8 feet. I'm in a demo area, so that should be a sufficient amount of area. So I'll bring that north 8 feet, and I'll measure that in the field. So here you see I drew in my own control point down this line that's on the CAD, and this line also is theoretically also in the field, and I'm putting that right up here, and I'm going to say check. So now what I've done is I've added a control point, which I'll come call my dummy control point, that's on this line. So it's in the CAD file. And this point is in the field, and this line's in the field, but I don't have that point in the field yet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use missing line, which is in this applications button right here. 
and I'm going to take my total station. I'm going to measure this point right here as my first point, and I'm going to walk down this line exactly eight feet to get to the CP2 point that I want to that I have here in the CAD file. So let me do that right now. Right now my total station is looking at the CP3, so I'm going to measure that as my first point. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk down this line, and you're going to watch as I walk down that I'm going to get a live read of a horizontal distance as I walk down that line. So I'm going to skip the video a little faster, but you can tell that it's following me down the line. And what I'm going to do is when I get to that 8 foot mark, I'm going to mark it very clearly on the ground so that the field has an 8 foot line and my cat has an 8 foot line that I can now benchmark off of. So now I have CP3 in the field, I have this line in the field, I have CP2 in the field, and they're all accurately to, on this cat as well. So what I'm going to do now is now that I have this marked in the field and on the CAD, I now have two control points. I know that they're going to be accurate because I literally just measured them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to station on these two control points and I'm going to do an as-built of my other control points, especially control point 1 and control point 5 to see where my errors might be. So let me start with that. I'm going to go into stationing, manual stationing, and I'm going to simply station on those two points now. So CP2 my dummy point, which I'm over right now, I'm going to measure that. And then, of course, CP3. As you can see, I measured both of those points in, and I'm getting a perfect stationing. And I knew that it would be a perfect stationing because I literally measured those out to be exact. And I'll go ahead and accept my station. Now the next step is to do an as-built by using the measure and record function of my other two control points, CP1 and CP5. So right now I'm over CP1. And I can already tell by the crosshair that this is most likely going to be accurate, but I'll measure it. And now I'm going to zoom very far in, and I'm going to do a Kogo distance check. And I'm finding that the deviation between these is about a quarter of an inch, which is a little bit worse for wear. But now let me go ahead and use the measure and record function on CP5 as well. Again, I can tell by the crosshair that there's going to be a pretty significant deviation, but I'm going to measure it and figure out what that is. I'll zoom in. Look at the deviation, and that's coming up as a 2 and 5 16 inch error. So I obviously know that this is a control point that's most likely not accurate. The 1 quarter inch over at CP1 also has me a little bit concerned. I probably want to talk to somebody about what's going on there. And the reason I was able to get this as built is because I was able to start from, again, CP3 is where I began. I drew in that point over here, and I used missing line, which looks like this to pull that exact distance. The missing line is just a virtual tape measure. I force the tool to station on these two points. And so essentially, my gospel point is CP3. And these as built are showing me that according to this line and how the CAD is organized, these points are coming up a little bit off. There's a lot of ways that this could be helpful to you, but I wanted to make sure you could see the button pushes and the principles behind this so that you can apply this on your own job site. Imagine how valuable this information will be to your general contractor as they are trying to sync the layout for all trades on their job site.